Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are simplifying simple entry. We're going to look at layers in simple entry today. Now, in finale speak, layers are groups of notes and rests in a measure that have their own independent stems and beams. Traditionally, I think we'd call these voices in music, but finale calls them layers. And we have up to four layers available to us in finale that we can use in any given measure. <coughs> now, if you're somewhat familiar with speedy entry, you know that in addition to layers, you can also access what Finale calls voices, which is uh, similar but different in speedy entry. Um, you should know that voices cannot be accessed in simple entry. That is something that's specific to speedy entry. So we only have layers to work with, okay? <coughs> now, to get to, to different layers, uh, in the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see this pull-up menu. This is layer one right here, and if you click on it, you can access layer two, three, and four, so you can just select it there. There is a shortcut to get to those layers without going into that small little menu on the bottom left, and that is command option numbers one, two, three, and four. So let command option two for layer two, three, four, and layer one. You can see them changing down here as I do that, right? And uh, the layers in Finale are color-coded, so if I were to enter notes in layer one, you'll see that they are black. If I were to enter layer notes in layers two, they are red. Layer three will be green, and layer four will be blue. All right, now these are just uh, internal color code, just so you can see what, what uh, color the notes are. They won't actually print that way. All the notes will print black, so it's not. don't worry about that, all right? Um, Layers 1 and 2 have some specific properties, that so for now I'm going to only deal with layers 1 and 2. Um, obviously the advantage of using layers is that you can have uh, multiple lines in the same measure, so that's really what we're going to use layers for, right? We don't want to just randomly put different layers in different measures like I just did, right? So let's uh, illustrate how this is going to work. So let's start en entering some notes in layer 1 to start. Okay. Now, launching layer two from this position, there's a couple of different ways to do this, and um, both ways will result in, in different uh, behaviors in, in layer two. So currently, I've got the, the carrot uh, hovering in the second measure, except the fourth beat of the first measure is still highlighted, okay? With that fourth beat highlighted, if I were to, from here, launch layer two, what Finale is going to do is it's going to move the cursor back to beat four, and it's going to let me launch the second layer right from that fourth beat. All right, so from here I can choose eighth notes and enter a couple notes that way. All right, and you notice that all I've got there is two eighth notes on beat four and nothing in beats one, two, and three. Uh, technically, there is something in beats one, two, and three. What Finale is doing is filling the first three beats with rests and hiding them for me. Um, I can actually go and unhide them. Uh, if you from from this position, if you arrow over to the left, and this is where it gets tricky because the highlight color is magenta and layer two is red, and you can't really tell the difference, so you kind of have to keep track. But now I've got the D highlighted, arrow over again, I've got the E highlighted, arrow over another time, and I've got the quarter rest highlighted, even though nothing's showing because it's hidden. But if I press the H key, it will show. And then if I arrow over to the left one more time and press H, the half rest will show, all right? And H will hide it again. So, and then arrow over to the right to highlight the quarter rest and hide it. And you notice that these rests are not quite in the right position. So from here, when you've got that uh, half rest highlighted, just use the arrow down key to move it a little bit and then arrow over to select the quarter rest and arrow down until it's in the right position, all right? Um, so that's the first way of launching layer two uh, in that manner. So let's talk about the other way to do this. So let's enter that same thing in layer one. Now, instead of launching layer two with that fourth beat highlighted, if I were to press the right arrow key, what happens is that the cursor remains uh, in that second bar, but the fourth beat gets unhighlighted, which is what we want to do for this method. From here, you can launch layer two and it will stay in place, right? So now that, that uh, carrot is, in, is still in beat one of, of the second measure. And from here, we can use command arrow over left and right, up or down, to uh, select a different measure to start in. So if we, if we command left into the first measure, it will put that cursor at the beginning, okay? And the difference, obviously, now is that we have to manually enter those rests if we just want the eighth notes on the fourth beat. So again, we can just choose uh, half note, zero for a rest, 
quarter note zero for a rest, and then enter our eighth notes, okay? Subtle difference between about how the, the layers are launched in that manner, okay? Um, there's one option that I want to talk about in uh, the simple entry options that's related to this. So go to simple, simple entry options. Um, it's this fourth option here called launch layer mid measure. If we uncheck that, Finale is not going to allow you to do what I just showed you the first time, which is that it will, you know, from this position, I've got that fourth beat highlighted if I were to launch layer two, right? It's still putting that cursor on beat four, but actually when you start entering notes now, they're going to start from the beginning, all right? So with that option unchecked, you will not be able to launch uh, notes mid-measure as it suggests, okay? I think it's probably a good idea to keep that uh, checked most of the time. All right. Um, so that's entering layers one and two. Now, I said that layers one and two are unique uh, compared to layers three and four. And the reason for that is because when you enter notes in layers one and two, when both, when both layers are present in the measure, layer one will freeze its uh, stems and beams upwards. And layer two will freeze its stems and beams downwards, like it does here. Obviously, in layer two, if you were to enter this by itself, actually, I can show you that. If we just start entering that same figure in layer two, right, it appropriately puts the stems up. It's not until you enter notes in layer one where those stems will freeze downward, or those beams will freeze downward, okay? So that's just how that works. So layer one and two are, are set that way. Layers three and four are not, okay? And if I enter notes here in layers three, right? And then I go back and go to layer four and enter some notes. You'll see that the beams and stems are all crossed. Actually, what's happening is that they're all taking their default position, right? So those uh, eighth notes are beaming upwards because that's how it would normally do in those in those uh, staff positions. And the, uh, the stems in layers three are going in the direction that they should be going in, all right? Now there's a, a document options for this, and actually I'll, I'll just show you what it is, but just suffice it to say that I, um, you don't really need to worry about this. When I talk about, uh, I'm gonna do a special video on layers, and I'll actually show you how to customize a lot of this, but you'll notice in the document options for layers, Layers one, layer one right here, has this option free stems and ties, free stems up, okay? Layer two, free stems down. And in layer three, it's not checked. And in layer four, it's not checked, all right? So you, but you can actually customize layers three and four to behave like layers one and two if you want. And I'll show you some advantage of that later when we get a little bit deeper into layers um, outside of uh, simple entry specifically, okay? Um, so let's talk about rests in layers one and two, right? So let's say we're going to put some notes in layer one. Uh, let's put a rest now, and let's put another note here, and maybe some more notes, All right? And then let's go to layer two, and let's say we're going to put a rest on beat one, and we're going to put a, another rest on beat two, and then some notes. All right, so Finale does a, a couple things here. You'll notice that the first rest in layer two is, is in a lower position. Finale calls this a floating rest, right? The default position would be in the middle of the staff like the second rest. The floating position is uh, set in those, in those document options um, to be below uh, the, that uh, middle line position, right? In the second beat, since I have rests in both layers one and two, and it's the same rest, what Finale is doing is it's consolidating those rests into one uh, default position. And that's probably a, a good um, practice to use, all right? If we don't want that, there's a way to undo that. And it doesn't matter what layer you're in. So I'm in layer, let's actually go to layer one because it's a little easier to see what's highlighted. Um, so I've got the rest highlighted now in layer one. If you use the S key, it will split those layers out to their floating positions. And again, layer one rest will float above the staff. It's actually, I think it's six steps above the center line. And layer two will float six steps below the center line, okay? And again, S will c consolidate them again. So S two will split them and consolidate them 
uh, as you need to, okay? And there is a document option for this, and I'll show you real quick. In case you don't like the default uh, behavior of consolidating those rests across layers, you can actually just uncheck it and hit apply. And by default, those rests will never consolidate. It is a little tricky if you have this unchecked to then manually consolidate a rest. Uh, I'll just show you this little mess of a, of a situation here because S will not consolidate rests anymore when that, check, when that option is unchecked. So from here, you actually have to move the rests with the up and down arrows, and layer one does something weird where it jumps to the bottom first, and then you have to move it up, all right? And then go to layer two, and then you can move that rest to manually consolidate it that way, all right? So generally speaking, it's probably a better idea to leave that option checked and uh, go from there. And then, you know, again, if you, if you want to unconsolidate them, it's easy to do with the S key, all right? Um, uh, what else do I wanna talk about? Uh, let's talk about ties. Now, ties will also freeze in the same um, way as the stem. So if I were to enter some notes in layer one, and then go back to layer two. Let's let's do this. Do a half note tied to an eighth note. And we'll put that in there. All right. So you notice that the ties are um, both downward in this instance, right? If I were to enter just layer two by itself, the same thing, without layer one present, you'll see that the ties get split appropriately, right? So it won't be until layer one gets added in this measure, I can just add layer one now from here, that those ties will then freeze downwards, right? So it's behaving the same way as the stems and beams. Like I said, the stems and beams will only uh, freeze when both layers are present, right? Uh, it's the same with ties. And, um, and then finally, like I said, you can have up to four layers in any measure. So let's just do that. Actually, let me just copy and paste that there and we'll put some more notes uh, let's go to layer three and we'll put some notes in this measure here all right and then let's go to layer four we can actually put uh, that a whole note all right and of course like i said when layers three and four are not set to uh, freeze in any particular direction so that's why you get this sort of mess in layer three where the the stems are down you know, conflicting with, with all the other stems in layer one and, and everything. Um, again, that's just because that's the way that the third layer is set. If you want to change that, you can change that in the document options. But um, let me just show you that if we go into layer three and highlight these notes, we can manually flip those stems and beams with the L, right? And that will actually manually flip them upwards, okay? Um, so let's see, did I cover everything? I think I did. Yes. Uh, so that's um, layers in uh, simple entry. Um, it's fairly simple, yet sometimes complicated. And uh, hopefully all of this makes sense. And now you have a, a, a good grasp of, um, of using layers in simple entry. All right. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, come back for the next simple entry video.